Hey everybody, this is Jeff, here with another edition of the Good News from Good News Gathering. One of the greatest blessings that I've had in life was the day my grandmother, my mother's mother, moved into our home. I was five years old. She lived in our home all through my growing up years and beyond. She was a fixture in our home, the constant. While the rest of us went off to school or work, she was home. And I mean that in more ways than one. And what an influence. She was a student of God's Word, able to quote the entire Sermon on the Mount, Matthew chapters 5 through 7, from memory. I have a picture etched in my mind of Grandma Lehman before going to bed, sitting at her desk, studying her Bible with pen in hand, taking notes. When I was little, there was there were things I'd be looking forward to. I'd be so excited I couldn't wait for them to happen. And I'd say things like, I wish it was Christmas, or I can't wait until we go on vacation. Or when I got into high school, I wish it was Friday, football, game night. And I can still hear my grandma say, Jeff, don't wish your life away. Think about that statement. Don't wish your life away. Grandma was trying to tell me, don't get so focused and so consumed by tomorrow that you don't truly live today. You don't enjoy today. You don't learn from today. You don't make the most of today. Because let's face it, we only get to live each day once. That's it. Every day is a one-shot deal. There are no do-overs. Grandma knew that every single day is a gift from God. It's something to be lived to the fullest, to be made the most of. Since the leadership team announced last week that we'll be resuming public services on June 14th, I found myself thinking, I can't wait until then. I wish it would hurry up and get here so we can all be together again. I can see you all. As we've gone through this time of separation, I know many of you have thought, as, as I have, I can't wait for this to be over. I wish all this was behind us. How, how soon can we get back to normal? But before we rush back to business as usual, remember Grandma Lehman's words. Don't wish your life away. How does God want us to live each day? What can we learn from this time? How can we make the most of this experience? On the weekends, Cheryl and I have been checking in on as many members of the G&G family as we can. It's been a joy to see so many of you. And it's been fascinating to hear your stories about the impact this stay-at-home time has had on your life. We've seen 1,000-piece puzzles being put together by multiple generations. Packets of homework that kids and their parents have waded through together. Families going on hikes together or spending an evening playing board games or bingo or building forts out of pillows and blankets. One parent commented, we would, n we would never have done this if it weren't for the fact that there's nothing else to do. What a telling statement. You know, Grandma Lehman's words remind me of words written by the Apostle Paul in Ephesians 5, 15 through 17. He wrote, Be very careful, then, how you live, not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity, because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is is. When he says the days are evil, Paul's acknowledging that we live in a fallen, imperfect world, a world in which human evil, sin, and natural evil, everything from viruses to volcanoes, tornadoes to tsunamis, are realities of life. But despite this, for Christians, every day is an opportunity and Paul tells us, make the most of it. Don't waste it. 
Handle it with care. Think about how you spend your days. Don't just roll through life from one day to the next without asking yourself, what is God's will in this? What really matters? Can I let you in on a secret? The coronavirus didn't come as a surprise to God. He wasn't caught off guard. When the stay-at-home order went into effect, God wasn't sitting up in heaven wondering, what's going on down there? <laughs> Is it possible that through this time, God has been at work trying to remind us of the importance of family, our church family, and time spent together that just may be running in a hundred different directions at once isn't indicative of success or of a life well lived. Perhaps the real question we need to be asking is, have we made the most of this opportunity? And what are the lessons we've learned that we'll carry on after this crisis is over? It's been exciting to me to hear how so many of you have been making the most of this opportunity. Families have been connecting. I've heard about life groups becoming more intentional about staying connected and checking up on each other. People having watch parties where they invite a small group of people into their home to watch our services or engage with our prayer time or digging deeper. People have been serving each other and others outside our church family. At the same time, while we're looking forward to getting our church family back together on June 14th, what was true in Paul's day is still true today. The days are evil. The virus is still out there and people are still dying. And so the leadership team has chosen to be very careful for the first three weeks, we will not have children's or youth programming. These will resume on July the 5th. You are welcome to bring your children, but they will remain with you throughout the service. Because we will be live streaming the service, we ask that parents with small children, as a courtesy to our online viewers, consider sitting in the atrium or the middle school viewing areas. These additional socially distanced seating areas in the atrium and phase one edition will have access to the service by live stream as well. We understand that we cannot guarantee a germ-free or virus-free environment. And we understand that there are widely varying opinions regarding the risk this virus poses, the likelihood of transmission, and what protective measures should be taken. As we move toward resuming services, we will take as many sensible precautions as possible and then let each individual and each family make their own decision about whether to attend or continue to watch our services online. Each of us is ultimately responsible for our own health. Every time we leave our homes, we assume some risk. It's imperative that each person use their best judgment based on their own age, health condition, and comfort level. As I indicated last week, we have decided to delay the reopening of our children's and youth programming until July 5th in order to gauge the impact of Ohio's reopening on the spread of the virus and to minimize the risks involving children as carriers of the disease. Communion packets and paper outlines will be available for pickup in the atrium, but clipboards and pens will not be distributed. Our hope is to reincorporate these services in the months to come. We understand that some will not feel comfortable returning to in-person services right away. You can continue to take in all of our online offerings. Some will return but will choose to wear a mask. I appreciate that because it's a visible reminder of the need to socially distance. Some will return choosing not to wear a mask. We simply ask that everyone be aware and respectful of those around you. We've chosen not to block off seats 
in the auditorium for the simple fact that many families attend and families are not expected to social distance. If you are uncomfortable because there are others seated near you, simply move to another seat. That's not a problem. Considering our seating capacity, two services, and seating in the atrium in the addition, there will be plenty of empty seats. As we move toward June 14th, let's remember to be careful how we live. Not as unwise, but as wise. Making the most of every opportunity. Connect with your family. Connect with your church family. Connect with someone far from God. That's what the Lord's will is for each of us. And that, friends, is good news. I love you all and I miss you. We'll get together again next Thursday for more good news. Take care, everybody.